All right, now, uh, just mainly as a foil for talking about things later, I want to introduce a toy model. The toy model isn't a good model. It does not describe decently any kind of anti-decida space, but it's, it's a useful foil for, uh, for discussing the city space later. First of all, the pod is a point of instability. What I mean by that is that if you had a particle or an object, a galaxy or whatever it happens to be, which was slightly displaced from the pod and you allowed it to evolve, it would eventually fall through the horizon. That means it would move away from the pod and fall through the horizon at a distance R, capital R, away from the pod. Um, once I pick a pod, once I pick a pod, I can then look at the motion of an object relative to that pod. I pick a pod, meaning, what does that mean? That means, really what it means is I pick a point in the remote future and in the remote past and think of the causal patch. I, I didn't really fully define the causal patch. What is the causal patch? Is it domain of uh, influence of the... Uh... So you pick a pair of points, one in the past, one in the future. You construct the static patch associated with them. Having, uh, having uh, constructed it, uh, then there's a natural pode, which sits at the middle of it. And, uh, and anything slightly away from that pode, following geodesic trajectories, will fall through the horizon. And uh, that, uh, that would, I would like to know if we can form a holographic theory of this type. Uh, I would not be terribly disappointed if in the end we find out that there are limitations and that this can at best be an approximation, uh, that it's a scrambler of any kind, yeah. But no, but it, the, the, uh, the motion of that particle relative to the pode is an exponential growth of the, uh, it's a typical exponential growth associated with an instability. And the, ni the non-relativistic model, which is most like this, would simply be a, an upside down potential, the pole sitting at the top. You know, let me go back a step. If I were to build a simple model of deciders, of anti deciders space, anti deciders space, a model that's simple enough that I could explain it to, to a small child, I would say it's a sort of container with a potential that pulls stuff toward the center, a gravitational field that pulls stuff toward the center. anti deciders anti space is the opposite of deciders space, so the deciders space is the opposite of anti deciders space in this respect. It uh, looks like a cavity with a repulsive center and an instability for objects located at the top of the potential here. Anything at the top of the potential, if you displace it a little bit, will fall and will fall down to the minimum. I also want to imagine that there are in non-relativistic particles and these particles have been put in with some energy, some temperature, and that they sit down at the bottom here and uh, form a kind of thermal gas with an entropy of order the number of particles. This region is the horizon. This is the pole. Anything you drop in will fall off and eventually be in the horizon. The horizon degrees of freedom just exist there in boring eternal equilibrium. Very boring, but with occasional interesting Boltzmann fluctuations. By a Boltzmann fluctuation, I mean a large scale fluctuation in which a significant number of degrees of freedom might find themselves up near the pole or someplace else. It doesn't have to be at the pole, but a pole is a complete, uh, is a convenient place to think about. That's about all that can happen. Well, it's not all that can happen, but this is one of the things that in principle can happen. And uh, of course, it happens very infrequently, but this is all that happens in a pure Desider space or in a pure model like this, occasional fluctuations. And it is my belief that what an ideal Desider space is, is it's, or a theory of an ideal Desider space, is it's just the theory of these fluctuations. 
But the fluctuations can be interesting. They're very intermittent. They don't take place very often, but they can be interesting. Uh, sometimes people call them Boltzmann brains. Okay, the questions that I want to address is how do you calculate the probability for these fluctuations? How do you calculate the probability for these fluctuations? And I'm going to give you three formulas for the, for the probability of a fluctuation. One is you calculate the entropy of the system constrained to have the Boltzmann fluctuation present. I'm calling the Boltzmann fluctuation theta. Theta or O, I can't remember, theta. Uh, constrained subject to the condition that the Boltzmann fluctuation is present, calculate the entropy of the system. The difference between that entropy and the entropy of the pure de Sitter space or the pure, uh, sorry, the entropy without the Boltzmann fluctuation, that is called delta S. And the probability for the fluctuation is just e to the minus delta s. That's, a, that's one of Boltzmann's formulas. Another formula is that it's e to the minus beta times the energy of the fluctuation. Those two are consistent for, a, uh, for, a, for an isolated system. And the last formula is let's suppose that we can quantum mechanically construct a projection operator that projects out states in which this theta object is present. Then the trace of rho times pi of theta is the probability that theta is present. All three of these are the same, basically the same formula, where rho is of course just the thermal ensemble. 